الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبینا محمد و علی علی و صحبہ و سلم اما بعد حبت فی اللہ in a hadith recorded in Sahih Muslim Zayd ibn Arqam narrated that the Prophet والسلام, said or used to supplicate Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa wa min qalbin la yakhsha wa min nafsin la tashba wa min da'watin لا يستجاب لها رواه مسلم The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام used to supplicate this beautiful supplication O Allah I seek refuge in you from knowledge what does not benefit from a heart that does not entertain fear of Allah سبحانه وتعالى from a soul that is not satisfied and the supplication that is not answered. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa' wa min qalbin la yakhsha' wa min nafsin la tashba' wa min da'watin la yastajabu laha la yustajabu laha اللهم إني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن دعوة لا يستجاب لها. In this hadith, it mentions four very important things, and this is only a portion of the du'a, and hopefully we will be able to. Study and look at this du'a in more depth. But in the du'a, the Prophet ﷺ, and this is a du'a we should strive our best to memorize. And the best way to keep du'a and to keep knowledge in general is, of course, by applying it and reciting it. So when it comes to the Quran and when it comes to supplications and dhikr that the more you recite it in your prayer and when walking and when going to work and when going to school when whenever that it's going to be on your tongue and you're going to memorize it and maintain it and retain it so it's very important for us to recite it often and the supplication began O oh Allah I seek refuge in you from knowledge which does not benefit here, the Prophet ﷺ implored his Lord, Allahumma, O oh Allah, imploring Allah seeking his favor, seeking his assistance, supplicating to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and not supplicating to Ghayrillah, and not supplicating to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not supplicating to the Prophet ﷺ, not supplicating to Jesus ﷺ, not supplicating to Maryam alayha salatu wassalam not supplicating to Jibreel alayhi salatu wassalam but rather supplicating to Allah Azza wa Jal the creator of the heavens and earth Al Khalik Li Kulli Shay the one who created everything the sovereign Lord Subhana and so that imploring of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is a part of what? It's a part of Tawheed al-Uluhiyah, meaning Tawheed al-Ibadah, because you are now supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is an act of Ibadah. The Prophet sallallahu said, a dua hu Ibadah, that supplication is worship. Supplicating is worship. When you supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a dua hu Ibadah, supplication is worship. There's no other way to really explain that. It's very clear. It's very wadah. And with that being the case, this affirms for us that we should not supplicate to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, uh, you should be, be ibadati rabbi, rabbihi ahada. And do not 
worship anyone besides your Lord at all. Do not supplicate to anyone. Do not worship anyone. Do not commit shirk. Do not associate partners with anyone. So this dua is a part of that tawheed. It's a part of actualizing tawheed by supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Tawheed al-ibadah or tawheed al-uluhiyya. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from knowledge which does not benefit. So in this portion of the supplication, this is that actualization, actualizing the tawheed, practicing the tawheed by worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, by supplicating and imploring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and seeking refuge in Allah. I seek refuge in you. In you from what? From knowledge. Huh? If we stop there, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilm. La. We can't stop there. We can't say, oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from knowledge. La. But then the rest of the dua clarifies for us what exactly, what type of knowledge that we are seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from. And that is, ilm la yanfa. Knowledge that has no benefit. What kind of knowledge has no benefit? Knowledge of shirk and kufr. Knowledge of uh, that which is prohibited. That mainly has no benefit. Unless for some particular reason, maybe a scholar or someone doing research has to know that knowledge in order to warn the people about it, in order to refrain from it, whatever the case may be. But generally, you don't need knowledge of bid'ah unless it becomes necessary to understand that bid'ah to refute it or necessary to understand that bid'ah to, in order to stay away from it. So then the students of knowledge, the ulama, they warn the people about certain bid'ah. Some bid'ah they don't warn the people about because that bid'ah may not be in that locality. The people may not be aware of it, so they don't need to be aware of it. Because then, by opening up that door, the people begin to look into that. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from knowledge which does not benefit. So that means there's al ghayra nafi. As, as we make the supplication, Allahumma inni as'alaka ilman nafi uruskin tayyib wa amalan mutakabbilan. O oh Allah, I seek, I ask from you, ilman nafi, beneficial knowledge. So when we supplicate, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for beneficial knowledge. We also supplicate, as in this, the case of this dua, we seek refuge in Allah from knowledge which has no benefit, which is also supplication. It's, it's, it's the ada, it's seeking refuge in Allah from something. So we seek, I seek refuge in you from knowledge which does not benefit. That's the first thing. The second thing, from a heart that does not entertain the fear of Allah. وَمِنْ قَلْبٍ لَا يَخْشَى And from a heart that doesn't have fear. Fear of what? Fear of Allah And I'm going to mention something that I came across in my research recently. And this is from one of the popular modernists in, in, uh, in America, in one of the particular universities. And he's an academic that's supposed to be uh, a scholar of Islam. And he said that modernist, and this is really a, referring to himself, uh, find that uh, fear, having fear of Allah, is one of the words he used is uh, vulgar. He mentioned the word vulgar. That's one of the words. He actually had the nerve, and this is a man who is completely fluent in Arabic, comes from an Arabic country, knows the studied supposedly, allegedly, with scholars in this in one of the particular Muslim countries, and he knows, even though he has, he's a clearly Aklani, you know, he's clearly a uh, rationalist, but he actually had the nerve to say that fear of Allah, we don't, see, you know, you shouldn't have fear, it should all be love, and it should all be, of course you, you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
But the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that he fears Allah the most from uh, the creation. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran that the ones who fear him the most are the ulama, the scholars. So that lets us know the characteristic of fearing Allah, having taqwa, is something mahmood wa mashru'ah. That it is something which is beneficial and good, and it is mashru'ah. It is legislated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ladina amanu wa taqullaha haqqa taqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, fear Allah. اتقوا الله ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة. O you who believe, fear your Lord, who created you from a single soul. Allah subhanahu wa taala all throughout the Quran encourages us to have taqwa. Who are we having taqwa? From who? From what? From Allah Azza wa Jal. From His punishments. From our Ibadah not being accepted, although we have husn al and we, we have to balance that. Bayna khawf wa raja But we have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as the Prophet والسلام, the best of creation, feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and set that example for us. This is for the Muslim. Now for the non-Muslim, for the ones who, the, the for the Zendik, for the Murtid, for the people who leave Allah wa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then yes, they fear whatever or you know, they fear their nafs, they fear losing their wealth, they fear the dunya. But the Muslim is ordered to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, going back to the supplication. O Allah, I seek refuge in you from knowledge which does not benefit, from a heart that does not entertain the fear of Allah, that does not... From a heart that has no fear, because the heart that doesn't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes into all kind of ma'asi, with no shame. I was speaking with my students today, and some of them were mentioning about traveling during the vacation after Ramadan to different places which are well known for Ma'asi. And they joke about getting into the Ma'asi. Showing us the lack of taqwa, that we gain some benefit in Ramadan, but some of us throw it away immediately, and may Allah protect us. Min qalbin la yakhsha. From a heart that doesn't fear Allah, that doesn't gain the benefit of gaining taqwa, of gaining khushur wa khashiyah from Allah, uh, min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't want that heart. We want the, the khawf that is mithmoon, uh, that is uh, mamdoh, that is praiseworthy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from a heart that does not entertain the fear of Allah. He, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa supplicated with this. I seek refuge in you from knowledge which does not benefit, from a heart that does not entertain the fear. SubhanAllah, this is from the Al-Fad of the Prophet This is what the Prophet said, and this person is supposed to be an Islamic scholar, an academic, has the nerve to say, fear of Allah is vulgar? And, 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 and it's like it's primitive. I think he said primitive was the other word, and I have to look exactly. I have the quote in my research, because I copied exactly from his book. This is what he said. We find it vulgar. Uh, this is a kalimat, uh, this is a word which opens a door to kufr if it isn't disbelief. Because then you're making something which is all throughout Thabit in the Quran and the Sunnah saying that it's, it's vulgar. So the Prophet in this supplication supplicated, O oh, I seek a refuge in you? from knowledge which does not benefit, from heart that does not entertain fear, and then from a soul that is not satisfied. Because when we don't have satisfaction, then we look for other things. If we're not satisfied in our wealth, maybe we look for the haram. If we're not satisfied in our relations, we look for other relations. When we satisfy, you know, you're not satisfied, you look to fill your belly with more. And this is the fitrah, this is the nature of, uh, of the children of Adam. They won't be satisfied until their dust is filled with dirt. So we have to be, that's why seeking refuge in Allah from a soul that is not satisfied is very important for us. 
We want we want contentment. Doesn't mean you have to have a lot of wealth. Doesn't mean you have to have a lot of wives. Doesn't mean you have to have a lot of this. But you want contentment in what you have. That's that's the the raya. That's that's the the what's important. That's the goal. And that shows shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah bless us with that. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. To be satisfied with whatever provisions He gives us. Ya Rabbil Alameen. From a soul that is not satisfied. So the Prophet sallallahu sought refuge from those three things. The first thing is what? Knowledge that has no benefit. The second is a heart that doesn't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third is from a soul that is dissatisfied. And the fourth, and the supplication that is not answered. SubhanAllah, that's camel in our, our life, in, in our what we need. This is why it's an important du'a to memorize. And the supplication that is not answered. Who does not want their supplication answered? I don't think any of us would say would, would say they are, they are of those people. We all pray to Allah because we want acceptance. We want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. We want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us what we want. We want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide what we need. We want subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a risk and, and make it a, a, a good provision. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our risk and increase your risk, I mean. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our health and increase your health, I mean. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase and bless the Muslims everywhere. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And guide all of His creation to the worship of Him and Him alone. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the supplication, the dua, we want the dua to be answered. So, the Prophet alayhi salatu sought refuge in for, from, in Allah from four things. From knowledge which has no benefit, from a heart that does not entertain the fear of Allah, from the soul that is not satisfied, and the supplication that is not answered. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min an la yanfa, wa min qalbin la yakhsha, wa min nafsin la yatashba, wa min da'watin la yustajabu laha. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min an la yanfa, wa min qalbin la yakhsha, wa min nafsin la tashba, wa min da'watin la يستجاب لها اللهم إني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع من قلب لا يخشى ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن دعوة لا يستجاب لها and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, to accept that dua from us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al nafiyah, wa rizq al tayyibah, wa amal al mutaqabbilin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.